and we are back here on the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Manny Maradiege, continuing on these this first episode as me as the host. In the first segment, we talked about the, the Chip Shot segment, just bringing up stories of players, coaches, personalities off the field, unrelated to, to games and scores and results and teams like that. I brought up J- Jason Kelsey and his off-the-field antics, how he's really grown into this personality that everybody loves, as well as bringing up the NBA Celebrity All-Star Game that's going to kick off NBA All-Star Weekend that starts today at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Michael Parsons participating, C.J. Stroud participating, and Miko Harmon Pukunuku are late additions to that. So I talked about that, my thoughts, who I think is going to win, the MVP. Um, so that was the first segment. Now I can move on to the second segment, which is which teams are under the most pressure to win this offseason, right? The offseason's already firing. There's some key dates heading or coming up, I should say, in the calendar. Just March 5th, I think it's the last day in the, the calendar year to sign new players or sign players to a new contracts, I should have said. And then after that, um, you can't negotiate anymore and you have a risk of potentially letting them hit free agency. But the most the teams that are under the most pressure to win this offseason, I was watching ESPN a few days ago and I saw that Mike Greenberg, the host of Get Up on the on the weekdays, had his own list and I wanted to bring it up here and talk about it, give my thoughts on it and see what kind of reasoning he had behind it. So his top five teams that he thought needed to win this offseason or were under the most pressure to win, get it right this offseason, were at five were the Buffalo Bills. Number four were the Dallas Cowboys. Number three were the Pittsburgh Steelers. And number two were his New York Jets. And number one, the uh, Chicago Bears. So just initially from that list, he gave a few reasons that I wrote down um, as well. So I remembered the starting with the Bills, the Bills, there's a lot of talks of their Super Bowl window potentially closing. They have some pieces on the defensive side of the ball that could be hitting free agency that are were injured and now they're, they need to get them back or they need to re-sign them to new deals. Um, obviously, this past season, they had a lot of injuries. Tredavious White, Mike Milano, and just in the playoffs as well, some of their other corners got hurt and linebackers just all over their defensive side of the ball. It looked like they were missing pieces. Offensively, too, Gabe Davis missed a game against the Steelers and didn't play against the um, Kansas City Chiefs as well. So they were just missing pieces. They obviously didn't get it done. Everybody had them more as more of the favorites than, than any other time just because they were had that home field advantage. Everyone kind of had it as a foregone conclusion that they were going to face the Chiefs this time in Buffalo. And there was a lot of unfortunate circumstances. Obviously, the missed kick there by Tyler Bass pretty much sealed it and was a devastating way for them to lose. But um, I thought, in my estimation, that was a good team to have on there. I probably would have had them on there. But just because of that reason that their Super Bowl window does seem to be closing in some aspects, but a lot of people, and I would probably agree with um, this group, thinking that um, as long as you have Josh Allen, you have a chance. You know, that window is only as open as long as he's there. And I think he's proven to be that kind of caliber quarterback to duel with Patrick Mahomes um, a lot in the playoffs and the regular season. Yeah, he hasn't come out on the winning side, but he I don't think you can name any other quarterbacks that have taken it toe-to-toe and that really made you think that, wow, this guy is about to be Patrick Mahomes and not to cheese out of the playoffs. It's only been Joe Burrow and um, Tom Brady that have beaten him in the playoffs. So I think Josh has the talent to do so. They're just missing those pieces, those key moments to, to really, really capitalize on on their moment if they were to face off again. But I do agree with the Bills. I do agree with the Cowboys just because, again, they're going to be in the playoffs just because their conference overall is a lot weaker, in my estimation, than the AFC. In the AFC, they have a lot more um, top 10, top tier quarterbacks. And in the NFC, I think there's just more, there's less experience in the NFC with these playoff games. And there's also younger coaches in the NFC that, uh, don't have the years of experience that some do in the AFC, like a John Harbaugh, Mike Tomlin, Bill Belichick, um, McDermott now. 
and I know I'm missing one. Oh, Andy Reid, obviously, I guess. Um, you could add him onto to that list as well. There's a lot more experience, a lot more years of trial and error on the AFC, where in the NFC, um, some of the top-tier teams, like the Lions, the the Packers have Lafleur, um, Dan Campbell as well, a young coach. Really, you could say the most experienced one in the AFC, unless I'm missing someone. Um, probably Pete Carroll. Um, he's been with Seattle for as long as I can remember. And then everybody else hasn't really stuck around too much. There's a lot of younger, new-age coaches in the NFC that are trying to establish their legacy. But the Cowboys um, have one of those more experienced coaches, Mike McCarthy, but not to the level of success that those other coaches are, right? Pete Carroll's won a Super Bowl. Mike McCarthy has one with the Packers. But with the Cowboys, it's been nothing close to whatever he had with the Packers. Obviously, they had Aaron Rodgers in the prime of his years. But the Cowboys have... Um, just as talented, if not more talented, roster overall than the Packers did in those years. So, Mike McCarthy, the Cowboys, this offseason is going to be huge for them because they do have a lot of other free agents that I'm going to get into in the last segment of the show. But just the, the general thought around them is they're going to be in the playoffs, but what are they going to do? Yeah, they made it past the um, past the first round. This year, actually, no, they didn't. <laughs> they actually didn't make it past the first round. They, they lost to the, the Packers. Um, but it always seems like the regular season, they kind of up their levels a little bit in the regular season. Two years ago, they were good. Now, this past year, it looked like they were even better because of CeeDee Lamb, his breakout year. The defense was just as good. And they just had all these players, Stephon Gilmore added to that defense when Trayvon Diggs went down. Defensively, they were just as strong, if not better. And offensively, you could have said they were better as well with Ferguson now being added to the group. He was very reliable for Dak Prescott, C.D. Lamb, like I mentioned. Tony Pollard struggled in some aspects, but he's still a middle to top tier um, running back that the Cowboys had. So they have everything. In the regular season, they look great and all, but then afterwards in the playoffs, it it comes down to that quarterback, man. Like, honestly... um, If you don't have someone that has that it factor, that special factor to them, it's going to become really old for the fan bases, for the organization, when it looks like they're right there. You have the game, or you should win, and then they have a performance like the Cowboys did, which it seems unfathomable unfathomable because um, of the talent that they had. Jordan Love was making his playoff debut on the road, uh, and it just all, whatever... Anything that could have went wrong went wrong for the Cowboys. Dak, um, I think, is finally at that point with most of the fan base. Not all of them. There are still some that believe in him. But I think with most of them, they're kind of thinking, this kid was supposed to come in and bring something that Tony Romo couldn't um, in all his years as the Cowboys starter. And I think Dak hasn't really done that to to any estimation. If, if anything, he's kind of... You could argue he's done a little bit worse than him in the playoffs because with Tony, they made it further past the first past the first round in, in those games against the, the most famous one against the, the Packers with the desk catch and all. Um, but Dak Prescott is, if he's giving you the same as Tony Romo, then, you know, then most fans are going to think, what are we doing here? Why is this still okay to happen? Why haven't we changed them? And I'll get into that a little bit more later on when I talk about Jerry Jones' comments, but the Cowboys were always going to be there. The Steelers were some, were, was the place in the list that I tended to disagree with just because I think there's one team that for me is under a little bit more pressure because with the Steelers, the way I look at it is I just mentioned that quarterback and everybody needs that. And I mentioned that in any team in the NFL, but especially in the AFC with everyone seemingly to, to get better um, the Chargers are most likely going to get better with Jim Harbaugh there. The Bengals are going to have Joe Burrow healthy, not injured the whole time. The Browns look legit, and we're, we're going to have to see how Deshaun Watson looks, but if he comes back, plays just as good as Joe Flacco, they're going to make it far. You saw how they make it, made it to the playoffs. Um, and then just on top of that, the Ravens are still the Ravens. Yeah, they might have a lot of free agents, but you still expect them to compete. Whereas the Steelers, I think they're still in a tough spot where 
there's still some hope for Kenny Pickett, but he's just gotten injured a, lo a lot for me. Um, in some games, he's looked pretty well. He's competed, but in other games, it, it just looks like the offense is still struggling. He's not really making a difference as much as people would have hoped. And a lot of it was thrown on to Matt Canada, but once he was gone, it still looked on and off. He got hurt again with the ankle. Then Mason Rudolph came on, and they actually looked better um, in that aspect with Mason Rudolph with a change with a bit more um, risk-taking and stuff like that. So I think they're just a step away from this being the season, this off season where they need to get it right because I still believe they're going to have a average to below average quarterback. So nothing in this off season, I think, gives me a thought that they're going to change that and that they need to win this off season to have a good regular season. If they get Justin Fields, I know that's a rumor that's going on a lot, but I don't know. I think other than that, it just seems like they're not going to get a prominent quarterback to thrust them into that role. So that's why I don't agree with that. And I wanted to put the Eagles in there just because they look so dominant in the regular season to start this past season and the season they made it to the Super Bowl. Um, they had great coordinators. They made it to the Super Bowl, like I mentioned, and Jalen Hurts went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Patrick Mahomes. And it was just a penalty, uh, a sack fumble that kind of cost them that game. But you had the hope coming into this season that they basically had the same team, same players on the defense, offense, but it just looked rough, especially towards the end of the season where they lost five out of their last six games to some pretty bad teams like the Giants, um, with all due respect, because of the record that they had at that point of the season. They lost to the Cardinals, they lost to the Cowboys, the Seahawks as well, and it just didn't look good, and they, a lot of people want to put it on their coordinators, um, and that, to me, just strengthens my point because I think this offseason, they got rid of those coordinators from this past season, and now they have to get it right because that's seemingly only the, the only issue, right? Because the offense just looked like it didn't know what it was doing. It was calling some questionable calls at not the right points of the game. So the Eagles, I think, are just good hires away from, from being, <coughs> excuse me, from being that team again, that we saw two seasons ago because they have all the pieces. I know Jason Kelsey might retire. Some of the guys are getting older, but they did a good job of, they always do a good job with Howie Roseman of resupplying through the draft, making trades if they have to, not being afraid to, to pull the trigger on some things to improve their, their team overall. So if they continue that trend, I think they're just coordinators, good coordinators away from competing once again, and they need to get that right. The pressure is on them to get it right this offseason because if they do, they're going to be right back in that picture in a weaker NFC with competing with the Niners and the Lions that are now a good, a prominent threat as well as the Packers that look legit with Jordan Love. So I think that, to me, gives them more pressure to get those hires right because if not, they're going to be pretty bad um, or more of the same this season if they lose Jason Kelsey. But if they get those right, they're going to have a great regular season, in my opinion. After that, I agree with the with the next two being the Jets because um, the Jets, again, if they fix that O-line and if Aaron Rodgers doesn't get hurt in a freak accident like he did, um, rupturing his Achilles the first week, the first drive as a Jet, um, they could they could really compete, in, at least in the division, because everyone saw Zach Wilson play and, and the, the off-the-field distractions and storylines that were coming out about him. You're not going to get that with Aaron Rodgers because he's been there, he's done it, he's an established veteran that can get you to where everybody believes they, they can get with this roster. They have a good young talent, Sauce Gardner, Quinn and Williams, Quincy Williams, his brother on the defensive side of the ball. Offensively, Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall looks like a great running back. They're just missing that X factor, that quarterback and the O-line because Aaron Rodgers, I'm sure everyone saw that he was, during the, the preseason last year, there was a lot of talk up that O-line. It still wasn't fixed, and now they have a good opportunity to do that through the draft. And if they can do that and hit on those offensive line um weak links in the offensive line, I think they can have a great team, a great roster with a difference maker like Aaron Rodgers coming in and finally fulfilling that potential that everyone saw in them last all season. And obviously the Bears, there's not much need to be said there. They hold the first overall pick. They could get 
a generational talent like everyone likes to call him, Caleb Williams. I have him as the best quarterback in this draft, but um, I'm sure other people see it a lot closer. But to me, he's electric, he's creative, he's not afraid to, to take risk and run outside the bo- run outside the, the quarterback's box and make plays, extend drives, and I think that makes him special. And it's hard to pass up on a guy like that because of the hindsight of saying no to him, and then he goes on to be you know, a Patrick Mahomes of that caliber. So the Bears, I think, are going to cave to that um, to that speculation, and then you have to wait to see what they, they get with Justin Fields, what kind of haul they get, and if they do get a good haul for Justin Fields, they could have a great offseason this year and compete in that NFC North with the Packers kind of elevating themselves this past season, but the Vikings, you don't know where they're going to be with their quarterback situation, and then the... Uh, it's the Bears and then the Lions. How are they going to deal with all the hype and expectations that are now put on them? So I think the Bears have a good opportunity to do that, to restock, find their franchise, and you know put get that live up to that pressure and produce something special out of it. And I think they could get a lot of special um, moments with Caleb Williams um, being their quarterback. So they got to get that right, obviously. The draft's going to be a huge point in that. But if they get it right, I think there there could be a lot more success than there is skepticism like uh like like it's been surrounding them these uh past few years with their quarterback. So that's what I think on on that topic on that was brought up on Get Up, the teams under the most pressure. My one change there was the Eagles going in for for the Steelers, but let me know what you guys think in the live chat or any comments and engagement that you guys want to afterwards whenever you view this this episode but it is time for another quick break here halfway through the show now i'll be back after a quick break there and talk about Tua Tagovailoa's contract situation so don't go anywhere we're going to go to another break and on the other side we're going to take a deep dive into the contract situation with Tua and the Dolphins so don't go anywhere <laughs> 